In our discussion today on tradition number 22 from the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, we want to look at the topic of thinking about yourself first and then others. Now we know within the life of this world we tend to want to focus on other people. In when it comes to charity, for example, we want to help another person, help our neighbors, help the community, help the society on a whole. And then we tend to focus on ourselves. And there is nothing wrong with that, to help other people out, to give another person a helping hand, to ensure that they have the basics of life. But today in our discussion, in terms of the spiritual um, aspect of this, of this tradition, we see that the commander of the faithful is advising us to first of all think about ourselves and then other people within our society. And so before we go to understand and look at the meaning of this tradition, let us first reflect on the actual text of what the commander of the faithful is saying. And in this tradition, he mentions the following. The one who places himself as a leader for society must start by refining himself before cultivating others and must train others through his own good conduct before training others through his speaking. In this tradition, we see that the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, brings forth two very important points that each and every single individual needs to think about. Without a doubt, many people in the world today uh, like to be leaders. They like to be in charge of something, whether this be the leader of a country, um, or we bring it down to a, a smaller level, the leader of a company, a corporation, he becomes a, a, or she becomes a CEO or a CFO or any of these positions. Um, or even we break it down to a smaller uh, local level. For example, people who are engaged in uh, provincial politics or local politics within their own city. Or even at a more granular level, people who are the leaders of religious faith-based communities or non-profit charities and going down to the most common level of leadership within a family. Everybody, uh, or many people rather, maybe uh, aspire to be a leader in some way or another. And there is no problem with that, to aspire to leadership as long as you have the criteria, you have the qualifications, you have the ability to lead a community or a family or a society or a, or a large group of individuals. However, the challenge comes as the commander of the faithful tells us in this tradition that before a person, man or woman, tries to make themselves up as a leader for a society or their family or their community or organization, before they want to go and lead others, they need to be able to lead themselves. They need to be able to break free from the clutches of, of, of mental, uh, spiritual bondage and slavery. Uh, bondage to you know the capitalistic system, bondage to really anything other than the bondage and servitude to Allah. And once an individual can break free and be himself or herself free and be a leader to, them own, to their own selves, then they can be a leader to those individuals whom they are seeking to actually govern and, and rule over. And the Imam then mentions that he needs or she needs to start with the teaching of the self before they begin to teach other people. And this is very important, whether it be within the corporate sector or even within the religious sector. That you can't, and we can't expect an individual who is going to teach people um, anything about, you know, uh, the personal life or about a religious life uh, aspect. And they themselves are not e people who are, you know, knowing and understanding these things. So how can a, a religious scholar, for example, preach about offering the daily prayers when he or she themselves are not praying the daily prayers? How can they advise others to give in charity, uh, to help the needy, to help the poor people when they themselves are not performing these actions? So the tradition tells us that, you know, that before you tell others to do something, then you yourself need to follow that particular act in your own life. The second portion of the tradition mentions, as the Imam says, that before a person goes to preach and speak and talk about uh, virtuous ethics and morality and things to perform in, in the religious context, for example. He says, before you go and speak, 
He says, do those actions through your own. So show people, teach people by example. Don't teach people but just simply by words, by speaking. Yes, it's very important to get onto a pulpit and to speak and to educate the community. But more important than that is for the people to see that individual living the life and following in that example by that person's own practical implementation of the religion. So it's easy to speak words and to give theoretical concepts and to explain these things to society. But it's another thing to actually implement those teachings in your life and then show the people, look, I am doing this. This is my way of life. And if you want to follow, then don't just follow the words, but follow the actions that I am following. So we see that in this tradition, the commander of the faithful gives everybody a very important lesson to learn. That it is not enough to simply cast yourself as a leader of society. Rather, a leader has to be one who is following somebody much greater, which in our case is Allah uh, and the Prophet and his successors. And once a person is free of following anything else other than the religion, then they have the right to help and to try and lead society or humanity. And ultimately, as the tradition ends with, is that we cannot only be people who speak, but rather we have to be those of action, people who actually implement and follow the teachings and to put those into our life and to let people learn through our practical implementation of a religion rather than, just that, rather than just a theoretical approach to the Islamic teachings. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm <laughs> sorry.